okay? This one is called The Real Reason Anime Discourse Has Gotten Bad. I'm gonna try to predict what he's gonna say. Maybe one of the talking points will be about how anime has gone mainstream due to the woke ideologies and mindsets. They are not understanding what it means to be, I guess, a quote-unquote anime degenerate. There is way more censorship and other things to kind of, I don't know, make anime be more PG-13 or accepted to a wider audience. But at the same time, you know, a lot of people are now going to have even more discourse regarding it. But Asarata, please give it to me. Anime fandoms have been around for a long time, and this discussion isn't even really unique to anime, but just fandom and discourse at large. That's Harry Potter. Sucks. And before you guess, no, it's not about shippers or power scaling. It's about a few things deeply more interesting than that. Yeah. When you partake in the fandom experience, you see a lot, and I mean a lot, of toxicity for a variety of reasons. You post why you like some- I mean, the toxicity isn't specific to a fandom. I still refuse to believe that Boruto fandom is toxic, or people who play League of Legends, you know, they're all toxic. No, no, no. It's the law of large numbers, right? Think about the term 1%. You know, what's 1% out of 100? You know, that means that 99 people like it, but one person might hate it. You scale that up to 1,000, suddenly instead of one person hating, it's 10 people hating. You scale that up to 10,000, instead of 10 people hating, 100 people hate it. You see how the bigger the number gets, there's always going to be this vocal minority that's going to scale bigger and bigger and make it seem very toxic. So uh, that's basically that. Something and people tell you to stop talking, you post why you dislike something, and you open the floodgates to months of harassment and attacks. There are in fact entire YouTube shorts, TikTok, and Twitter communities designed around the concept of rage baiting or mm. intentionally posting things you know will get a reaction. Yeah, on Twitter, bro. Or there's also horny baiting where, you know, you just do some down bad shit. But you, you know, how do you get engagement online? It's not by having things that people agree with because most people, especially on like, even on YouTube videos too, right? Happy people don't comment. It's the most mentally ill and deranged motherfuckers that's upset that is the minority that comments in the vocal minority then exist. Because fandom reacts the way it does. As an online content creator, anime discourse is one of the most common things I see, unfortunately. I was also largely known for my My Hero Academia content, so when it ended, I couldn't oh, help but notice boy. a few particular trends. I didn't realize he used to cover My Hero. I thought that he was just like a ReZero guy. Cool to see. ...of argumentation, and as I continued to look, of course it wasn't just MHA or anime, but discourse at large. One of the most common arguments you will see to most takes or posts is ghost hunting. Not like literally, but ghost this hunting. version of an argument that someone had invented in their head and has decided to respond to. Like... Oh, like, nobody fucking made that point or argument, but someone responds to it, and then that itself then becomes a source of rage baiting? Think about it. How many times do you see arguments where people completely make something up? Yeah. It's not an insignificant amount. On Twitter, bro, every fucking day, someone says the dumbest shit, and then everybody is dogpiling in the thread to get more clout, right? It really introduces a fundamental question. Why do people do this? Why do people do this? Because people are lonely and desperate and isolated more than ever before. They are so deprived of anything fulfilling in their lives. The only thing that they can actually do to make them feel something in their hollow hearts is to farm online points, which means fucking nothing. But if they see that what they said suddenly starts to get traction and other people are talking about it and the acknowledgement goes to them, they feel good about themselves. It's a very cheap form of dopamine rush. But I feel like to answer that question, we have to ask another. Why do people get into arguments in the first place? Because they got nothing better to fucking do. They're jobless motherfuckers that spend their time online arguing with other random people about topics that doesn't fucking matter. Because people are bored. People are desperate. They're bored. They, they want... People, human beings are social creatures that want to be acknowledged, to have their opinions, to be championed by other people. The moment that someone else says something that you don't agree with, they need to feel like, no, my opinion is right, yours is wrong, everyone starts arguing in order to prove each other. I mean, just go back to the other fucking psychiatrist video we made. We made a fucking video, some retard comments on it, then there's fucking 64 replies in the next hour. These monkeys are just arguing and arguing amongst themselves, doing nothing with their lives, it's just sad. Specifically, in fandom, whether it be television, anime, manga, games, or anything else you can think of, 
I've spoken extensively on this channel about self-worth and phantom labels, and this is something fundamental. I would like to watch these videos too, actually. This seems like a pretty interesting concept. ...to understanding modern day discourse. Ultimately, humans are deeply social creatures. Yep. What they look for is a root of belonging. To feel rejected yes. is a deep, horrific scar. The yes, they want to belong to a community. In fact, the reason why so many people, so many kids, and I never understood this because I think it is so cringe to say, I am part of the ReZero community. I am part of the Mushoku Tensei community. And because I've never thought myself like that. I was like, I'm an enjoyer of these shows, but I don't think that I'm part of a fucking community. Why do you need a fucking community? And if you want to be part of a big movement of many people enjoying same things together and be part of a club, there is nothing wrong with it. But I see a lot of people take different fandoms as if, because like they've never done anything of noteworthy themselves. They're a fucking nobody. But then they coattail on behalf of a fandom, then speak on behalf of them and start fucking wars on against other people of different fandoms because they stir up controversy to get more fucking engagement. The human heart. It's why issues of bullying or harassment have such powerful effects on people. There are studies on this and how it impacts fandom. A study, Are You Fan Enough? The Role of Identity in Media Fandoms by Samantha Grohn and Vanessa Hedinger dives right into the topic. They would find that Harry Potter and Twilight fans would meet their need of belonging through assimilation mm -hmm. with their respective fandoms, with fans forming a collective fan identity and benefiting psychologically in terms of positive mood and life satisfaction. And that's great. There is nothing wrong with feeling like you belong somewhere, that you're part of a community, that you're amongst people that you enjoy shit with. But the moment that this goes really bad is when motherfuckers start attacking others. It's like tribalism. It's literally like team sports mentality. If you're not with us, you're against us. They cannot coexist. One must be better than the other. Action from this social surrogate. People become intertwined in fandom because it gives them validation. It gives them a safe place. It gives them yes. a community to be a part of. It's a human experience. Mm -hmm. And just like any other human experience, it can quickly go wrong. People are at a risk of assigning their value, their self-worth, to these fandoms and these labels, and coupled with how modern-day online discourse works, it's kind of a recipe for disaster. Yep. When every interaction comes at the cost of your sense of belonging in a group that serves as a social surrogate... And not only that, when you realize the best way to get engagement is to say the most toxic, volatile shit because you realize negative engagement is the cheapest and fastest way to get those numbers, it becomes even more toxic. It's just a cesspool of mentally ill people all fucking engaging on tribalism. It begins to warp how you approach conversations. Through this lens, conversation isn't used to genuinely ascertain someone's position. It isn't used to try and convince someone of your own ideals. It isn't even used as a means to convince an audience. Online fiction- It's to convince themselves. It's fucking meaningless, arbitrary argument that does not matter. In ...debates become a way of solidifying your position in a group and yep. justifying your existence in these spaces. Arguments go from personal discussion to internet blood sports or an event to be won, as people prioritize pointing out contradictions or fallacies and attempt to master the art of the gotcha. The gotcha is something all online discourse has become centered on. Whether it be political or fictional, all that matters in modern day internet discussion is that you have something that you can catch somebody out on. We all enjoy a good gotcha from time to time, but a gotcha is not a replacement for an argument in itself. You might be wondering what a gotcha even is. Well, a good way to it's like a logical trap of you, you know, set aside these different things against someone that you're arguing with, and because your example suddenly, you know, cannot be uh, contradicted by the other person, they're like, oh shit, I gotcha now. See, I was right. My opinion was right. Think about it is through live streaming. In the modern era of content creation, where pieces of content that are rapidly digestible are perfect for our rotted minds, what came about as a response in the live streaming space is clip farming. Mm -hmm. In place of coherent, consistent content, not to imply you can't do both, is just, you know, clipping people out of context to use that as a narrative to go against what that person might have said in the past. I gotcha. You were a hypocrite. People play for clips. These clips can contain exciting moments that don't require surrounding context, investment, or research. They are easy to digest and consume before you like and move on. What's to say that this same type of thinking wouldn't apply to modern day discourse? The art of the gotcha is to create a screenshot of a moment that doesn't require the necessary context of the conversation or arguments, that doesn't require investment in either side, nor requires any research as to what they are talking about. It's a post that on its face immediately highlights, generally, some form of alleged hypocrisy or mm -hmm. crazy dunk or insane potential statistical count. Basically, you hate this guy and you spend your entire fucking day 
dedicating yourself to finding more stuff about this guy to figure out, you know, if this person, you know, is contradictory or not. You know what the perfect example is? All we got to do is this. Kaka TV, Reddit. First example, Kaka TV makes a 9-11 joke. Recently, streamer AKK has been called out by Kaka TV by saying, why are your eyes so far apart when Kaka TV literally made a 9-11 joke on stream? Anyone able to find a clip for me? Yes, this is Osujama related. Uh, it's also funny because this fucking retard just got dunked by the Osu community saying, wow, <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> what is it? Bro made a Reddit post to look for a comeback for his favorite streamer. Um, the context you don't really need to know, but basically there's people looking for specific moments to say, I gotcha without even knowing the fucking context. Because if they knew the context, then it wouldn't fucking matter. Another really easy thing to do is just go on Twitter, right? And you'll see Mushoku Tensei losers coping and seething because I'm glazing a re-zero and they feel the need to, you know, get their shit fucking uh, heard. I think the perfect example is uh, this loser named, uh, where is he? This guy, this guy. We made a separate video. Basically, 24 second clip that has no understanding of what the video is even talking about. Goes on, makes his own stupid fucking narrative to farm a little bit of internet points with his other Mushoku Tensei Glazers. It happens all the time. Just a bunch of losers, lonely, pathetic losers that have done nothing with their lives, that latch onto other fandoms to feel like they have a sense to belong, to justify their existence, then goes on to engage in tribalism, thinking that just by clipping someone out of context that you can like dunk on somebody and make yourself feel better about yourself. It's just a sad, sad world, and I'm here to farm the mental illnesses of other people to make money off of them. Yep. Counter argument or, you know, accusing them of some ism, and can easily net you a like or a retweet, as ultimately when you lack investment, the deciding factor of who wins or loses a debate is how many upvotes they have. In 2007, Cass R. Sunstein, a legal scholar, wrote a book titled Republic 2.0, in which he discusses how the increasingly interconnectedness of the world will lead to mass echo chambers as everyone isolates from things they aren't interested in. For sure. A paper by Rune Carlson, Kerry Steen Johnson, Dag Wolbach, and Bernard Anjoros, titled Echo Chamber and Trench Warfare Dynamics in Online Debates, disagrees with this mid-2000s notion of Sunstein's. They claim that while echo chambers online can exist, due to the nature of the ever amorphous and changing algorithm, you are just as likely to run into differing opinions as you mm -hmm. are in an echo chamber. The issue isn't that people are sitting in an echo chamber, it's that they are firmly standing shoulder to shoulder in a trench. Becoming completely rigid in their views and the illusion of argument justification gives them a disconfirmation bias. That's why I think it's so like stupid to be like glazing a fandom to think that you have a place to belong and you're basically a hive mind. You have no independent thought. You don't even think for yourself. You just think that, oh, that's my moot. That's my mutual. We're both, you know, fans of this show and we glaze and we all have the same fucking opinion. You're NPCs. You are genuinely brain rotted NPCs that cannot come with your own critical fucking opinion. You can't even look at something objective and think for yourself. You are literally in the trench as a fucking NPC, thinking that you're part of a bigger cause, but at the end of the day, all you're doing is wasting your time online. Doubling down instead of taking a new perspective. This paper mentions a couple of terms I want to discuss first. Disconfirmation bias, which is the counterpart of confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, favor, and recall information in a way that confirms or supports one's prior beliefs and values. If your favorite sports team wins a match, you could deeply analyze every winning play, bring out stats as to why you think they are the best, but when they lose a game, Glaze. you could brush... Mm, it's not, no, not my fault. Rig match, rig match. ...over the mistakes of the team and start interpreting the events as a personal slight against yep, them. Yep, rigged. Maybe the refs made unfair calls. Disconfirmation bias is when you are presented with information or facts that go against what you believe, and you will scrutinize it far harsher than something that confirms your bias. If you see a news article that supports a belief you already hold, you may accept it unwittingly, but if you see something that goes against what you think, you might write off the source as biased. I think it's more useful to put these two concepts under one term, selective perception, as yep. they are awfully similar. You just want to believe what you want to believe in. It is so much nicer to listen to a white lie, to convince yourself that everything you're doing, you're doing the right thing. But if someone else calls you out on your mistakes or someone else calls you out on something that's actually objectively wrong, rather than being able to set your ego aside and analyze what's happening, you just say, nope, uh-uh, I can't see it, nope, not happening. 
It's something quite hard to avoid. One needs to make an active effort to not fall into these biases. This is part of the reason why aforementioned gotchas work so well, because you're standing ankle deep in a flooding trench in the middle of France. Yeah, and all you need is that one gotcha moment to prove my point. And confirmation bias will make you take these quick, easy, and oftentimes insubstantial arguments far more seriously as they come from your side of the aisle. This is further substantiated by the illusion of argument justification, a study posted by Matthew Fisher and Frank Heal in 2013. What they found is that multiple factors change how people engage with arguments. For example, if you are making the commitment to posting an opinion publicly, whether it be television, radio, newspapers, or, you know, Twitter, they found that people would often feel more extreme about their arguments. Emotional investment also affected how people view arguments, and participants with high emotional conviction on an issue rated opposing arguments significantly weaker. Yeah, it's about just being emotionally engaged in something that you believe in, and if you also do this shit online, because you're anonymous. Like, I guarantee you, these monkeys on Twitter would never say the shit that they say if they were in person. It's because it's anonymous that you feel compelled to say shit because there's no consequences, right? There's no threat of someone calling you out in person or even physical violence happening. So you can just say whatever you want and it emboldens them. Just a bunch of fucking pussies as their internal selective perception was automatically discrediting opposing arguments, starting them off on the bad foot immediately. Now, this isn't even the primary thing I'm- You know what the saddest thing is about this video that we're reacting to? It's not the fact that, you know, um, it, there's so many sad people stuck in this, you know, um, mindset of engaging in tribalism. It's that there's nearly 200 motherfuckers watching this stream right now, but you guys are so brain rotted that you can't even appreciate this kind of content from Asarata or the commentary provided by me. Not a single fucking line or, you know, opinion being made from you. You're all just saying, yup, that's my streamer. Yup, your opinion is my opinion. None of you are, you're basically the motherfuckers we're talking about on stream right now. You, you monkeys are just waiting. Where does you go to watch your Beyblade? We just go watch anime reactions. I would hope that my audience is better than that, but it looks like you guys are just monkeys. I'm trying to touch on in this video. I mentioned way earlier how a lot of discourse is ghost hunting, and this is when we get to that. We've established that the current online meta of argumentation is gotcha arguments. We've established that echo chambers are not the prevailing method of community interaction, but trench warfare is. We've established that selective perception will alter people's approaches to your arguments, yes, sir. and the illusion of argument justification will hamper it further. This is when the all-powerful ghost hunting tool comes in, the straw man. The straw man is an argumentative tactic that is dependent on responding to something your opponent didn't state. It references standing up a straw man, which is replacing the argument in your head, and knocking down the straw man, which is countering the argument that never happened. That's because it's easier to take down an argument that isn't being made, whether it be because you have good arguments against that one, or because your opponent is not prepared to defend that topic, but may inadvertently skew the topic into it, leading to a successful shifting of the frame of the discussion. Now, I want to get one thing out of the way before we continue into the rest of the video. Mm. I do not believe that a large chunk of the people who engage in the types of rhetoric that I've spoken about so far are doing it entirely on purpose. I think it is a very, very common mistake for people to attribute malice or more complication. Ah, uh, Hanlon's Razor. Basically, rather than thinking that someone is doing shit out of malice, it's not. They're just retarded. Never attribute malice where there is like, uh, I don't know, naivety or some shit. Sometimes, most of the times, people are too stupid to know what they're even fucking doing. And the outcome may seem vicious and evil, but know that they're too stupid to have even understood what they're doing. So it's just an accidental outcome. ...that is necessary to people's actions. I think genuinely bad faith actors participate in this behavior, but a majority of people are not bad faith actors. They're just making a mistake. They're just dumb. Some people go for gotchas and straw man arguments, not out of the pure evil of their heart, but because maybe... They just like the response it gets from their shared communities, or- Yeah, it's just again, this desperate need to be acknowledged by their people, to farm imaginary points online by saying shit. Perhaps they aren't even aware that they are engaging in a fallacy, and think the straw man is actually relevant, somehow. Straw man arguments may be used intentionally or unintentionally to distort reality so that the perpetrator can win the argument, and we discussed their motivations as to why earlier. I'm also pretty sure there's something about how winning arguments gives you a big dopamine boost, so, you know, yes. winning arguments. It's just that, to be on honestly, because I always choose to see the worst of people because I know exactly how disgusting the average human heart is. I think that people just want this shit. They're, they're just desperate to get that cheap dopamine hit 
because they're more isolated and lonely than ever. Everyone is so isolated and desperate and depressed. They need a quick fix of that dopamine hit to make them feel something rather than being numb all the time. And the fastest way to do that is to say dumb shit online. Feels good. I've actually come up with multiple examples of me watching fandom do this. Our first example is a conversation between two users in which the first poster says that in Jujutsu Kaisen, female characters don't have much of a role because of the inherent misogyny of Jujutsu society. Inherent misogyny of Jujutsu society. It's funny that you would pick this show of all battle shonens to depict misogyny because Jujutsu Kaisen has very strong female characters. Most of them are not just token fan service characters. They are all very independent and strong. Yet you think that there's misogyny in this compared to other shows where girls just exist to be just titties on screen? The way they view women restricts them from interacting with the plot. The second user explains that while that may be true, that misogynistic society was still ultimately created by an author, who was completely in control of the portrayal of these characters. This is basically an argument between two people with different frames of references on stories, diegetic and extra diegetic, but I'll make a media literacy video on that later. There isn't really any straw manning going on here, it's just two different frameworks. Where the straw man comes in, however, is when someone comes in to quote retweets and gets the gotcha about how if you write a world with issues, that means you support said issues. This quote retweet, one, ignores the context of the conversation. But does it matter? Who cares? He probably got more internet points online, so monkeys are gonna say, hoo, 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 bigger number, better person, he right. Two, doesn't require investment in the conversation because it boils down the argument to something everyone can agree on, that of course an author doesn't support everything they put in a story. And three, it doesn't require research because most people aren't going to click down a quote retweet war. Of course, the quote retweet in question is a product of the all-powerful mind palace. User 2 was criticizing the usage of female characters that do exist and participate in Jujutsu society, and it's no surprise that I would agree with that sentiment, and further argues that while the interpretation that it's Jujutsu society holding back female characters is a largely unsupported one, because ultimately all people are doing is forming loose connections together, because that wasn't actually put from pen to paper by the author. Sure. Whether you agree with that aspect is up to you. In fact, you can even find more of User 2's opinion by just looking. They specifically state that they aren't looking for certain characters to experience misogyny, but to use the in-universe misogyny to have weak female characters is not a great argument, and later on says that it's not 100% misogyny on the author's part, they just think that they are a bad character writer. I have searched this person's tweets for certain keywords, and not once do they ever claim that gay- This is like, yeah, this is so stupid. Like, I can't believe people spend their time writing this shit online. If you're gonna do it, at least make a video or like monetize yourself. But like, holy shit, people really spend their free time doing this shit. This is the most jobless fucking activity, bro. This is the most concerning thing you have in your fucking day to day life. What a privileged life you must live so that this is the most concerning topic to talk about. Gay is a misogynist. And of course, from my point of view, you cannot be a misogynist and accidentally engage in misogynistic behavior, which is a bit too much nuance for a Twitter conversation. Nowhere at any point in time does user 2 state that gay gay supports misogyny by putting gay a gay in the story, but of course, the quote retweet would go on to completely trump any tweet involving the Exactly! Because it's not about being correct. It's not about being smart. It's about slam dunking on others by making funny shit and have other stupid people brigaded and like it. See how many more likes this has? Again, you're online. Think how stupid the average person is and realize that half of them are dumber than that. Monkeys are going to do what monkeys do. All you got to do is this. You want the fucking argument. You know what the best option is? Don't engage. Do something else with your life that's more meaningful and productive that fulfills you. Conversation racking up to this point 4.1 thousand likes and a slew of replies from people attacking the user for no particular reason without ever really touching on the point they were making. There are proper counter arguments to user too. You can make arguments about how you feel the characters are relevant enough, or how the is- None of these matter. Y'all, none of you are getting fucking hearts. Your impressions are nothing compared to the quote retweet. He's already won. Doesn't matter if he's smart, it doesn't matter if he's stupid, doesn't matter who's right or wrong. He knows how to engage the monkeys, and he's won in this coliseum of Twitter. Issues the poster discusses aren't inherent to just the female characters, but the gotcha is easier. And of course, this isn't an anime exclusive issue. 
as I've tried to make clear throughout this video, strawman arguments exist in all walks of life. You see it in real life politics, like how if you support transgender people, you actually support people walking into bathrooms to sexually assault someone. It's a refusal to engage with the point. And if they aren't using a strawman, they're using what I like to call fighting ghosts. Fighting ghosts is similar to a strawman, but- Fighting ghosts? Is this kind of- it's kind of like ghosts that basically, you're just like fighting random talking points no one fucking ever mentioned, but you make it up to victimize someone else. Instead of just purely tackling an argument that wasn't stated, you may even just be imagining a situation that never occurred. There's- Well, like, like, it's, it's the most schizo thing, where like, you start arguing against the point that was never made to look yourself good. It's like, what are we ha what are we doing right now? This tweet that has been stuck in my brain since like August. Someone tweeted about how they had a D and D session in which they killed the monarch of a town and completely okay. democratized the city, opened schools, and created a healthcare system. They got completely <laughs> ratioed for something that seems pretty harmless because okay. people would come in with completely imagined situations. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little harmless. Who who is this harming, right? What is she trying to do? Is Joy implying that, you know, playing D&D like this could lead to the ruin of modern civilization? No, but people could probably fight ghosts right now with this tweet. Situations. Imagining one party member who actually wants to play a tabletop game sitting at the table like this in quiet agony as they're subjected to the rest of the party's glorified nation-state's LARP. What? In a situation where you don't know a single person, you have gone out of your way to construct a different version where people... Well, this could also be just a joke, right? I mean, this is... Yeah, this person is slam dunking the other girl, but at the end of the day, it's just a fucking joke, right? No one's really getting hurt here, but you could definitely be directing the hate towards that Joy person if more people brigade this and say, Yeah, what a fucking stupid opinion that girl Joy had. <laughs> like are miserable for some reason. Sure, they might have had fun, but what if they didn't? These people don't exist. You're just making something up. Mm -hmm. This might also be called getting one guide, like, hey, I saw one guy have this take, and your take is in the same zip code as his, so I'm gonna respond to that guy when I'm having a conversation with you. Like, this account stating that they find it disturbing that Endeavor from My Hero Academia got away with what he did to his family. Whether you agree with that or not is up to you, however, okay. given the quote retweets are things like, the fact that sickos like you defend Toya, Toga, Shigaraki... Oh yeah, this is the unhinged part of the My Hero, you know, community, I think. Just because of their tragic backstories was disturbing. That's- But like, who said that? The topic of interest is Endeavor, and whatever happened with him. Then you bring up a completely unrelated characters, because basically in their head, it's, okay, Endeavor did bad thing but got away with it, and the show is fine. Now I'm gonna take that framework of logic and apply it to every single other character, even though that argument was never made. Who are you do- who- <laughs> just- what the fuck? It's- it's- it's kind of similar to like, when you say, I like waffles, and someone else just completely out of nowhere says, why do you hate pancakes? I didn't say that. You're the one jumping to the conclusions. You're coming up with your own schizo conclusions on your head based on whatever implications you might have come up with the fucking original statement. What the fuck? Like, because <laughs> people, I genuinely think, need to feel like they're professional victims. Right? It's a harmless fucking tweet. Talking about fucking anime characters. And someone, because they feel like their world... Like, they, they just feel the need to be like... They need to be the biggest victim in the room. Like, they, they just need to let everyone else know about their problems. And then they write shit like this, even though nobody... Nobody suggested such a thing. It's crazy. Uh, th this didn't happen. This, this, it's honestly a lot, lot of pick-me vibes going on a lot a lot of very you know narcissistic you know this attention seeking behavior you are talking to someone else entirely people may fall back on things like straw men fighting ghosts or one guying someone because they need to win the argument to secure their social status yep it doesn't really matter what someone may have originally said people nope. seldom go looking for the original context for all intents and purposes the argument or discussion <coughs> you were having only exists within this twitter post the post they are quote retweeting and the reply while we may be discussing these three topics, the issue with discourse is much broader, as mentioned earlier. In an effort to argue for their place in fandom, they also discard arguing to learn and embracing arguing to win. I do want to make one thing clear. Just because it's called arguing- Yeah, like, I think a lot of people take these arguments as like a literal fucking duel. Like the duel of marketplace of ideas and I need to win, I need to slam dunk another. It's, it's never like this open-minded conversation 
of like, okay, I want to understand where you're coming from, what your perspective is. And maybe if I understood that we can come into an agreement because maybe there's miscommunication going on, but because of the nature of anonymous identity online and how just vitriol, just vile and toxic the average monkey can be, there can never be a space for that. It's just nothing about building on others and understanding each other. It's more of misrepresenting each other to make sure that their personal opinions are championed no matter what. Going to learn does not inherently mean you have to change your position. You can argue to learn and learn what their position truly is or why they came to that conclusion. And honestly, if you truly wanted to be the most pseudo intellect debate champion ever, understanding their perspective and their arguments helps you come up with your own logic that can dismantle their logic, right? But again, the, the, the goal isn't to be a good debater. The goal isn't to be, you know, understanding each other. It's about, I have my opinion. I don't really care what you think, but I'm going to somehow walk backwards until my opinion is held and that will get more points than you. And that means that I'm a better person than you because I won infinite points. However, this is where the conversation can wrap around back to anime because anime is a subjective medium. What arguing to win does in this context leads to art being viewed as math. People begin to treat highly subjective discussions as if there is an objective answer. People act objective and fight for points. The nature of online discussion frames discourse ahead of time to be objectivist. Mm -hmm. And like, what I really hate to see when I read dumbass fucking comments on YouTube is how people make their own personal opinion or headcanon as if something the author actually said. All you have to say is, in my opinion, I think this. But most people are so, like, emboldened by what they think. They think that their word is the fucking law. Stupid people that don't know the topic matter talking as if they're the actual, like, professionals. It's just crazy. As you want. I'm pretty sure there's like a psychological phenomenon. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's this phenomenon where the less you know, the more uh, expert you think on the matter is, but the more you actually understand and study that topic, the more you realize that, oh shit, I actually have no idea what I'm talking about. I forget the exact terminology, but I'm sure you guys can let me know. Want to ground yourself as the most reasonable. And of course, people would think of objectivity as the most reasonable one can get. Therefore, you get the most likes and have de facto won the argument. Yep. A study by Matthew Fisher, Joshua Nob. There it is. Tribalism, right? Tribalism, I think, is the most... It, it, it is a root cause of, of, of a lot of hate amongst human species. Because, like, I think that even, like, racism is root cause tribalism like do you know like like you might think that other races may hate each other but within people's own race they even hate their own race tribalism happens. yeah dunn and kruger effect is what i'm talking about regarding the psychological phenomenon of like the less the more of a newbie you are the more of an expert you think but but regarding the whole tribalism thing like like people band together with different ideologies and schools of thought and if you're not with us you're against us Brent Strickland and Frank C. Keel, titled The Tribalism of Truth, would diagnose this issue greatly and found that when conversations were formed under arguing to learn, people would come out with changed views or a deeper understanding. And unfortunately, social media algorithms have bred this kind of behavior even more. They push posts that get lots of engagement, mm -hmm. and posts perceived as negative are going to get more engagement. Yes, negative engagement is always going to get more engagement. It doesn't matter how many positive things you see, one negative thing that you see will override everything else. That negativity is simply way more significant than anything positive. It's again, it's the same thing of like why most people don't comment on the YouTube comment section. People that are happy with the video simply move on and they're content with their lives. But the people that are super fucking mad, they need to engage, right? And another thing what I think, and this is also like one guide where like streamers, myself included, a lot of people glaze, glaze, glaze. Then one stupid person says something negative, then you fixate on that only. I think that at the end of the day, it has to do definitely with ego, right? For sure. It's all about like having your view be challenged because the normative position, the default position is that my opinion should be right and you guys should be glazing me. But suddenly someone says something different or negative and now I'm going to fixate on that because that is no longer the normative position despite thousands of other people that have agreed with me, right? This whole negative engagement thing is so much powerful than positive engagements. Human interaction has essentially been gamified, pushing conversations to getting points and disregarding the human on the other side of the screen. Yep. This isn't something that can be fixed in one night, especially with cognitive biases like motivated reasoning.
And I don't think this is ever going to get fixed. I think it's by nature that people are becoming dumber and dumber. The education system is failing the common person and it's in the government's best interest to keep the masses stupid so that they can convince themselves to vote against their interest while having culture issues be the primary drama that divides and conquers us monkeys. Us monkeys are unable to unite and realize what's really going on at the end of the day. And again, I think that it's going to get worse and worse as technology enhances and as people get even more stupid. Which is when you are more willing to forgive bad arguments for your side. Humans find comfort with fandom labels, get entrenched in them, begin to fight others to protect their status in the fandom, resorting to bad faith arguments as websites like Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit reward bad faith human communication yep. by granting visibility and big dopamine rushes. Because at the end of the day, we human beings are disgusting creatures. Fundamentally, we're riddled with our sins and these negative toxic things. You know, Trump triumphing over the positive traits. You can see it, right? Money drives everything. Engagement rewards. And negativity engage, or engagement is just this toxic fucking cycle. It's just the... Twitter is just literally the perfect cesspool for the, like, the biggest mentally ill people. Just all coming together to create this perfect storm. And the cycle of bad faith, the dopamine, has led us to a point where all discourse has devolved into mindless gotchas that don't actually mean anything. What we need more of is good argumentation, which to me is when you actually know what your opponent is talking about. I don't think a good argument can happen until that benchmark is met on both sides. I don't think people want good arguments. That's not their priority. Their priority is to have their gotcha takes, to have their existence be justified through random internet points. There is no desire to be a better person, to understand each other. It's just all lonely, sad, pathetic people chasing internet points for that dopamine rush because life is hard all right even the people online love posting stupid shit never stop being good faith and keep screaming into the void thank you so much for watching thank you asarata for this very comprehensive video i'm surprised that he didn't talk about the whole dei wokeness or increase in the I guess the modern audience of anime as it becomes more mainstream. I thought we're going to go somewhere with that, but I was kind of correct with my prediction of, you know, negative engagement, dopamine rush, mental illnesses. I thought that Asarata only covered ReZero content because obviously ReZero is, you know, trending and he has a lot of ReZero content, but he also has so much, you know, My Hero Academia that I didn't even know and even broader topics like this, I think is fantastic. I'm really happy to hear. And it, it's cool to see content creators, right? Expand and like, evolve beyond their niche to be able to take risks and talk about more you know commentary on like societal issues and stuff like that that's how you really become like a variety channel and to have people watch you for you rather than what the topic that you're covering but please give his channel a like please give the video a like here's the link go give him a sub support him if you'd like and i will see you next time